Welcome to Novelist Spotlight, the podcast where published fiction writers are interviewed to gather their insights and writing lessons so we can use them to make ourselves better and more effective writers. There are just three things I ask of you, if appropriate to you and your experience. Please subscribe, please click on the like button, and please share this program link with any family members, friends, or colleagues who might be interested or benefit from the content. Now, on with our program. Years ago, many years ago, in fact, I was taught a method of speed reading that I've used ever since when reading nonfiction books, as well as long newspaper or magazine articles, a little bit with fiction too, but I'll get into that in a minute. I'm going to explain the, the speed reading method first and then talk about why I think it's, it's relevant. It's actually very simple. Take a chapter, you read the first paragraph in its entirety. You also read the last paragraph in its entirety. And all those paragraphs in between the first and the last, you just read the first sentence of each of those paragraphs. Now, obviously, you do that in order. You read the entire first paragraph, then the first sentence of each subsequent paragraph. When you get to the last paragraph, read it in its entirety. Why? Because when a person is, the author is starting a chapter or finishing a chapter, they tend to summarize. So you get the gist of it. And then along the way with the first sentence of each paragraph, typically what an author is doing with each paragraph is saying, here's a new bit of information, or I'm changing the subject slightly, or here's a different tangent on the subject that I'm talking about. So that first sentence, if it's written properly, should be filling you in, filling us in on what it is that we need to know along the way that buttresses that first and final paragraph. It's amazingly effective. It really does work very well. Again, for nonfiction, whether it's a long magazine article or a nonfiction book, you know, I used to work with a guy at Los Angeles Business Journal, and he used to complain that yeah, he'd read a lot of business books and would complain that most of these business books do not deserve to be book length. They, you could, they could really be boiled down to the size of a pamphlet. Because what the author has to say is really pretty straightforward and simple. Then they end up putting a bunch of fluff in there. They, they build the book up to 300 or 350 or 400 pages so that it's book length and will be taken as this very serious piece of work. Now, there's nothing to say that something boiled down to the size of a pamphlet isn't serious, but they tend to repeat examples. They tend to offer too many examples of what they're talking about. They repeat themselves over and over in the interest of fluffing up the book. As a matter of fact, there's an organization out there. It's been out there for a long time called Soundview Executive Book Summaries. And they basically take, not basically, this is exactly what they do. They take a full-length business book and they boil it down to something on the order of something you would expect from Reader's Digest. You can get an audio version of that that runs 15 minutes each, or a written version. I used to subscribe to it a long time ago. There's also something, a service called Blinklist, B-L-I-N-K-L-I-S-T. And uh, that's another one that takes business books and boils them down to the essence so the speed reading method obviously gets around that. And obviously, as you're reading the first sentence of each paragraph, if I hit a sentence and it's a paragraph and it's information I'm finding especially useful or interesting, then I read it word for word until it goes back to the more mundane uh, style of writing that most nonfiction books tend to be filled with. And then I go back to the first sentence of each paragraph again. So there's a chance to dive in where it makes sense, but at the same time, the method allows for what is effectively speed reading, getting through a book quickly and coming away with the information that you would remember anyway, even if you were reading it word for word. Why take all that extra time? And I used to be the kind of person, I'm sure many of you are, that used to think, if I start a book, by God, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to force myself to read every word. I'm going to the end. And you get a little bit older and you start to realize there's way too many books out there and life is way too short to get to everything you want to get to. So it makes no sense to force ourselves to continue reading 
anything in life that is not gratifying in some way, either informative or gratifying, entertaining, stimulating. Same with novels. I'm extremely picky about what I read in, in terms of novels, and I'm sure you are too. And I finally got to the point with a novel as well, where if I, even the great Tom Wolfe, I would get to sections of his books where he would inevitably, he was a great writer for landscapes, I mean, cityscapes more than landscapes, but the kind of landscape that's done at a, a mansion. He wrote about rich people so often, and I knew that I could very quickly skim through that without losing the story. I'd speed things along, and I'd really get to the meat of his writing, the stuff that I really value, which is not descriptions of of boxwoods and uh, bogumvias uh, around the front yard of a mansion. That I can do without it. One of the other reasons why the speed reading technique is important to me is because I'm not a particularly fast reader. Using the speed reading technique, it, it, you know, I go on warp speed when it comes to reading articles or nonfiction books. I certainly wouldn't read fiction that way. If I don't want to read almost every word of, the, of a novel, then I really don't want the novel. I want to move on to something else. But not being a fast reader obviously limits me unless I use some speed reading techniques, particularly where it makes the most sense. And as writers, one of the things we look to do is consume a lot of information. I know people like to talk about how novels are just made up, but the truth is that we put a lot of research in, into novels. Not necessarily even formal research, but our lives are laboratories. We've done things. We know people who have done things. We bring that stuff together in what is considered to be make-believe is really a lot of people's experience. It's, they're really nonfiction books under the guise of fiction. All we're doing is making a composite out of a story or a character or a vignette or whatever. I mean, when it comes to the, the nonfiction world, it's really all about just absorbing information. There isn't real narrative there most of the time. With apologies to people like Michael Lewis, who do outstanding work in that area, and many others do as well. But let's, let's face it, most nonfiction books, including self-help books, are just a dose of information, and that's really all you got. That's really all you get. So I would also make the argument that when you think about a book you've read and then you think, what do I remember from that book? The amount you actually remember would be no more than what you would expose yourself to. I don't even think it would be close to what you would expose yourself to, to using the speed reading method. And on top of that, I think with the speed reading method, you actually remember more because you get rid of the dross. You get rid of all that extra copy that really didn't serve the purpose. The purpose being to learn. It took me a long time to get to this point, but I don't waste my time reading stuff that I don't enjoy or that perhaps isn't of the value I initially imagined. And fiction books have filler too. I get that. It's just of a different nature than nonfiction. Thank you for listening. This is my counsel for Novelist Spotlight.